YouTube for Adobe and Brand Fans, welcome to yet another Blender tutorial. Today we'll be talking about After Effects and compositing your 3D into your real life. Let's get started. Alright, so we're going to start off where we left off last week with file management. I uh, forgot to um, uh, bring up a few points um, that might be useful. First of all, um, in the output, for your object layer, your object pass, as you can see you're down here, the balls, um, you are going to want to select RGBA no matter what type of file type you want. Now that brings us to the second part, file type. Um, you can render out videos as videos, but it's kind of annoying because if you stop, you, only, um, you won't get your full video back. Um, so I would suggest using image sequences. Uh, and then the other thing we have with image sequences is what type of image format. So you have OpenEXR, um, TIFF, PNG. Uh, so basically what matters here is the color depth. That is the um, how, many, uh, how much data is stored per pixel. And that will allow you to tweak um, the color and the exposure of everything post a little bit more than if it was at a smaller color depth that's less information but that also means bigger files the uh, higher the color depth you go and so that's where compression comes in but you lose quality in that unless it's a lossless compression which uh, in this case PNG is not so I'm gonna go ahead and select open EXR um, gonna do full flow which is 32 bit color depth um, as well as uh, zip lossless just to kind of uh, limit that file size a little bit more. RGBA, and that will give you the alpha, as well as the red, green, and blue channels. And then you're gonna want to um, render it out, and one thing you'll notice though is if you have it set up like mine, uh, with a composite going from the object layer and a composite coming from the shadow pass, you won't get a file that's saved out in the directory you put over here. So you're going to want to do, go to image, save image as, and then you can choose your file, your file format there. Um, now the other option you have is um, file output and under the output node. And so uh, this will, you can select your file and then it's basically the same thing except it always um, it always renders out, it always saves no matter what. In this case, when you render out an image, it will not save, but if you, image, if you render out an image sequence, it would save under composite. If you render out a video, it will save under composite. All right, and so that brings us to After Effects. In After Effects, you go, you're gonna wanna go over to your project panel, um, double click that, and then um, go ahead and open up your uh, files for this. I'm gonna go navigate and uh, so here is the object pass um, in open EXR format and here is the shadow pass and then you're gonna also want to grab the background image. So we're going to go ahead and make a new composition by uh, just dragging the, uh, the your background image into the new composition. Um, then go ahead and click that ABPC um, bits per channel, uh, set it 32 bits flow. And under working space, go ahead and select sRGB, um, linearize working space. Um, and then go ahead and click OK. Now, so you see here we have your background image. You're going to go ahead and add in the object pass, and as you can see, it'll just flop on there nicely. So, the shadow pass is a little bit more tricky. Uh, we're going to have to use a uh, track mat for that. So, go ahead and drag your shadow pass down in here. And now it's always good to like rename everything. Uh, so, just go ahead and do that. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and select new uh, adjustment layer. Go ahead and put that below the shadow mat. And uh, if you're not toggled into the track mat mode, go ahead and toggle that in down there. 
uh, and do Luma inverted. Now um, select the blending mode to multiply and then uh, hop on over to effects controls for that adjustment layer and I prefer to use curves and you're just gonna color correct the shadow into the image and it's a neat little way of doing that and so that also allows you to simultaneously color correct the um, cast of it to maybe a little bit bluer once again in brand tutorial you can go ahead and select HSB and navigate around here and find that you're making the correct color match and so uh, you want to match that uh, B color to be one percent here, one percent, and then saturation. It's probably a little bit oversaturated for that, and so uh, you can go ahead and color correct. Uh, where we keep the saturation and drag down the saturation for that. Um, next, you want to color correct your objects. <coughs> uh, so go ahead and select um, color correction. And then I, once again, prefer to use curves. Uh, as you can see here, um, it's good. You can match the, um, the pavement to the pavement because, once again, that ball is supposed to be 100% uh, reflectivity. And uh, so it looks like uh, it needs to be a little bit lighter. And then you also, there's a little bit of green in it, and take that out a little bit. And then uh, it's a little bit too saturated, so you can go color correction. And then pop a uh, hue saturation on that again. Like the other one, drag the saturation down. And then now that actually, you need the green bag in that if you drop the saturation down. And just slightly, slightly too dark. And that will do it. Now, um, there's a little bit of artifacting around the ball because the ball, um, the, it wasn't subsurfaced enough, so, uh, it's still, you can still see, like, the polygons on the side, and it's not completely smooth, and so that can be fixed in Blender with another, um, subsurface modifier, chemical chloric, uh, distribution, so it's, uh, a little bit more smooth. Uh, now the next thing is, it's still a little bit sharp for this image because um, lenses aren't 100% um, cl as clear as what's in uh, 3D, so go ahead and add a color correction blur, um, blur to it, or sorry, so add a blur, a uh, fast blur, and uh, because this is 100%, I would say at least one. And that kind of lets it sink in there. And once again, you can just dial in more and more of the shadows. Uh, the shadows look a little bit dark, so you can go hop back and over to shadow, or to the uh, adjustment layer for the shadows curves and bring that um, the RGB, a, a, or the RGB a little bit further up. Maybe take a, uh, no, I think that it needs that green that we took out of it, so it needs a little bit more green in the shadow, so just put a little bit of green in the shadow, maybe. Um, besides that, I uh, just keep on tweaking it, and then uh, that's about the basics. Now, there are some problems with this. Uh, for one, of, one of the problems is if you look at your render, um, if you look at your render from before in like Blender, say, um, the actual output of the shadow pass uh, down here, you can see there's fall off um, on the shadow 
and like kind of a darkening under that and that's because the environment is not factored into the shadow pass and so uh, I'll go back to you with another tutorial to fix that. Alright, that's it. Stay tuned for the next Blender tutorial. Make sure to check out Brandon's tutorial over on FreyW2 and his Twitter. Uh, besides that, stay tuned. If you like this, subscribe. Thank you.